Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. It's rare we start off with something serious on this show, if ever. Because usually it's just a, a handful of nonsense. It's just a bucket full of nonsense. Yep, shenanigans. Shenans. Yeah, tomfoolery. Haberdashery. Bunches of haberdashery. Yeah. Uh, you're not using that term, right? But whatever. Bunches of haberdashery? Yeah, it's incorrect. Now, what is that? Uh, haberdasher is... Uh, <laughs> It uh, sounded it, it, like an asparagus. It's almost like a tailor, you know, someone who sews. sounded but, like uh, an asparagus, like a, <laughs> a weed. No? Why, why, don't you, why don't you go pick the haberdasheries out of the yard, and then I'll give you 80 cents. Look. 80 I, cents per bucket. You put 80 cents worth of haberdashery into that little tin bucket for me, Timmy, and then we can go on about our day. I'm not a scientist. No. No, you're not. You're not. Definitely not a computer scientist. <laughs> Um, this is our son's uh, last day of preschool. It is. That goes fast. It goes fast. People tell you all the time, they're like, oh, cherish these times, they go fast. Cherish these times, they go fast. They go really quick. You should cherish these it's times. It's the shortest, what do they call it? It's the shortest, longest time. So like the days are long, right? Like, well, you don't know. I don't. Moms. Yes. So people that watch kids. Correct. The days are long. Yeah. It's just like a long day, but the years are short. Okay. So that's the, well, yeah. That's a terrible analogy, but yeah. No, it's a phrase <laughs> that people use. No, nope, never heard it in my life. Oh, there's actually a podcast called The Shortest Longest Time, but yeah. Is there really? Mm -hmm. It's a thing. I think it's about midgets, though. Say, yeah. It's the shortest, longest time, because look, they're, they're midgets mom. forever. It's a mom pod. Um, no, yeah. It, it's because uh, it, it is when you are actually in the thick of it. Yeah. There's no way that I believe that it goes fast because it, the days that you trying to get to six thirty, seven o'clock, like not like you're trying to get to it, but like right. it's a long day of momming. Right. It, and so, you're just like, oh, gosh. And it seems like it's not going anywhere. And then when you look back. The years have flown by. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I was trying to think about this on the way back because I've driven him to school almost every single day of preschool. Um, and to me, it's it seems like the right amount of time the where last I, I year you've just done it this last year. Uh, it's been like two years, but whatever. Um, either way, it seems about the right amount of time where. He's progressed at the rate that I thought he would and right. he's he's exactly where I thought he would and uh thought he would be and and it seems like the right amount of time like it didn't it didn't fly by to where I was like oh my gosh in tears there were some moms today just bawling in the lobby I mean yeah really, well yesterday really I was and today when I go to the school I will yeah. The only difference is that I'm doing it all over again with another kid. Sure. If I wasn't and when it's Jagger, yeah. you can count me out for probably a couple days. Yeah. So Jagger's our, our, our second child for the audience out there. If, if people I like don't how know. we just say names. We don't care. I know. Well, I let the audience know their names at least. But, uh, you know, they're not animals, James. Sure. Uh, we're not calling him Bilbo Baggins or anything. Right, or the kid. Yeah. The other kid. The <laughs> so I have the other kid that I'm going to be going through uh, all of this with, yeah. which is making it bearable, but... <sighs> yeah, I mean, I saw... I mean, there was one mom who just lost all of the shit inside of her body this morning, inside the lobby, and it was like, whoa. Do I know? No, I, 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 no I didn't know her. So I, you don't know her. I didn't know her. And, and like oh the, the teachers and the, I guess what you would call the principal was consoling her. And I was just like, Ooh, boy, that's, are you serious? Dead serious. Yeah. See, now I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> and they even said they sent a packet home for kindergarten and they were like, it's going to be hard when you take them to the first day, try mm -hmm. and hide the tears until you get into the car. 
Really? Yes, because it's not supposed to be a sad time and they don't understand why mom is crying on my first day of, do you know what I mean? Like, that makes this sense. is supposed to be a happy time. Yeah. So you, which I knew anyways, and I try not to let him see me cry, I guess, at all. Right. Yeah. Um, Cause he's very, he's pretty sensitive and nice and he'll be like, what's going on? Um, which every child is. Let's, for sure. And know. so even yesterday, if there isn't, it's be like, worried. If mom's crying and your child doesn't care. Oof. Oh, I'm sure it happens. I'm I, sure pro- it I know too. a couple. <laughs> I know a couple. Um, but so it made, it made sense, but it was crazy that it had to come home in a packet to me where Come on, you know that, and it, I know it's hard. But I don't like, know you have some parents know that. I don't know if some moms don't know that. Actually, make it like this ex- exciting time. I no, I understand that, but I, I'm, I don't know if if some moms know it. I really don't. Right. Um, there's a couple that I could I could name that I'd be like, oh man. And my tears, you know, like during the video, they come more from like working mom guilt a little bit. Because when you're in it, in it, it's like, yeah, I went to all the things. I'm doing all the things. It's a long, when I say shortest, longest time, it's even longer for the moms that are there every second of the day. Right. So part of it is the the guilt, right? Right. Which I'm sure you were probably thinking too of just like, oh man, like, d- was I there for all of it? Yeah. You was know, I it's, there? Like, it, it's funny. It's going by and it's like. Yeah, I went to all the things like he's in all the pictures like we did it. Yeah. But when you're trying to raise two children, three children, as far as like a business, kids, I mean, we always talk about it. Two children in a business. Yeah. I don't, want, always, I don't want the audience to think we have three. Chi- we, we don't have three kids. I mean, two children in a business, but the business well, for me, is, I have four because I have two and then you and then right. business. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's eh. like there's like a third kid <laughs> man you are in flags today <laughs> james you're in flags but um anyway it comes from a lot some of it comes from guilt but then you know that that is you guilt all comes from love anyway so it's all you know it's all it's all good it's just fucking rough dude the reason why i bring it up to start the show is i i, I felt Better than I thought I would. Like, I, I looked back the same way you did. I, I looked back and, and I was like, all right, did I do all of the things? Um, pretty much. Yeah. You know, there was, look, there's work shit that gets in the way for dads that, you know, uh, and moms. But, you know, tra- traveling shit for, for dads in particular totally, totally. where it's just like, ah, man, I missed, I missed one of those things or two of those things. But it wasn't terrible. Right. right? And then uh, as far as like driving into school every morning and doing stuff and everything, like, I felt I felt good about all that. So no, like I, we're fine. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, we everything's good. The balance is good, but still. I thought still I, I thought it would that. be a little more emotional than right. I was, and then I was like, I looked back at everything, and I was like, man, I think I did the best job I could. So I felt good about that today. Um, whereas again, there was a few parents in there. Just it was like the Wailing Wall over in Jerusalem. It's uh, they were for moms. I mean, no, it listen, was listen. it was it was hands on the on the cinder block walls. Just, ah, <laughs> there goes my hero. Oh my god! Watch him as he goes. Yeah. So, and I think every parent goes to school and uh, their, their kids want to listen to certain songs and all that stuff. So we did all that stuff and uh, it was good. Uh, I felt, I felt good about it. With me is bad guy. Oh, the, the Billy the, Eilish. <laughs> there's no curse words, but no. Gosh, it feels weird to listen to with him. You know, what's weird is, is <laughs> when you drive other kids in, in the car. And they have no idea what music you're playing. And I was they like, want to listen to Ghostbusters. As they should. The, yeah, well, as as they, they should. <laughs> Not ours, right? No. So I have this, li- I have bad this... guy, mom. Can I have bad guy? <laughs> By Billy yeah, Eilish. Tough guy. Like it really rough guy in the back, right? He's not singing it. Well, you and I listen to like brand new music all the time. So like this one kid, I'm, I'm not going to say who it was, but this one kid we were driving one time was just like, he goes, what? He was like, what is this? What do you, what is this? What was it, by it the was way? It was a mind altering experience. It was Kid Cudi. Which song, though? 
Uh, was it pursued to happen? No, it was. It was, okay. uh, it was day and night. That one. All right. There's no curse words in it. So in day and night. Yeah. There's no swear words in that. So, anyways, whatever, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Look, wait till they find out what mom and dad do for a living one day. Jesus. It's uh, true. It's true. Um, but anyway, I listen for the curse words, and then I go. Then I actually listen to the lyrics, and I'm like. Ooh, so I ahead. threw, so I, my, my, you know, our, yeah. our, our son was like throwing, throwing day and night by, by a kid Cuddy. And I was like, all right, cool. I was driving two other kids and, um, I mean, their minds looked like they were about to explode. And I asked the kid, I said, what is, what do your, you know, dad listen to or whatever? Mm-hmm. And, uh. Uh, one of them was just like, uh, you know, uh, John Fogarty or something like that. I'm just like, it's oh. Imagine Dragons. <laughs> the Madagascar 2 soundtrack. And or, or, Ghostbusters uh, on repeat. Ghostbusters on repeat. Hugh so. Jackman. Hugh Jackman's beard. A lot of people listen to the showman. Oh, okay. I haven't I gotten like, that one. No. Thank God. But those play, are the requests that I I don't even play that shit because I, I don't get. even want them to know. I want them to be cool enough when they're older to be like, yo. Because my dad treated me like that. And I don't know if your dad did that to you. So I can, I can I have vivid memories at three and four years old. You know, same age as preschool. Where my dad was cranking the brand, you know, the, like the Stones album, whatever the new Stones mm-hmm. album was at the time. And it was just like, oh, all right, cool. And I felt like that helped me grow up cooler where I was just like. I was always listening to new, new music as a kid growing up. So therefore, you, I was just like, I was hipper to shit than everybody else was as I got older, where I was like, all right, rad. He's and I very felt like a better musically parent. inclined. So I kind of want to get him on a path of like, you know, I always think of things as um, how the documentary is going to go when they're older. So I always think you of do? things, yeah, of like, <laughs> so I think about the kid talking about, you know, like what his parents were listening to, right? Yeah, what they did. Or like comedians when they talk about like, I was watching, you know, I wasn't allowed to, but I watched Saturday Night Live when I was this young, right? Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. let me watch it and they've grown up to be freaking Will Ferrell. You know what I mean? Sure. So introducing him to like just rad shit, not, you know, exactly, you know, not curse words, things like this, but Beastie Boys, Kid Cudi, like Billie Eilish, things that are like, Gosh, for me as a kid, it'd be mind bending. And I want his mind to be kind of bent in a music, cool musical way, right? Sure. To where he's like, I was listening to Bad Guy at five on the way to kindergarten. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to The Showman by Hugh Jacks. Right. Or Chunky. Chunky. I like him big. I like him chunky. I don't even chunky. know what song that is. So that is from Madagascar. <laughs> Not a prayer. Right, so there's that. Like I don't even play that shit in my car. Ghost bar, oh, ghost, yeah. ghost uh, busters. Yeah, you are a bad dad, but I will actually um, do the requests of the children that are in the car. Nope, not me. Oh, okay, not me. Oh, cool. Uh, one of them wanted to hear something from some animated movie, and I was like, mm, "That's Madagascar too, probably." Probably, I looked at this kid, and I was like, <sighs> "Straight dead in the eyes," you said. Get fucked, homeboy. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's what I said to him. Yeah, and it just got, it goes by so fast, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, last day of preschool. Yeah. Get, Get fucked, fucked. <laughs> homeboy. You're Madagascar too, shit. Jesus Christ. I don't mind, You'll be sucking your own dick in sixth grade chunky. if I started playing that shit. Um, no. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're getting away from all of that. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. They all like that song. I can't. I like to. I tell you, I tell you what came on at the gym because I started getting into some deep like playlists and shit. Because I'm sick of all my music. Um, I don't know if you are on your things you listen to, whatever. I just listen to podcasts, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I listen. I like to listen to music <laughs> yeah. I'm in the car when I'm working out, all that mm. stuff. And I'm sick of all of my new music. So I've been trying to find new shit. Ironically, that DJ Khaled album that I made fun of. There's, That's good. There, there's a few good tracks. Um, there's like three or four on there where I'm like, all right, cool. I can get down on those. Uh, the fucking new Tyler, the creator album is. Oh, no. Amazing. I, it's so weird. So great. Um, I, I wonder if we could play a song at the end of this. I mean, we could. Yeah. Um, it's but yeah, probably, right? I, I don't even know how you some... would. Every track is different, and it sounds like one of them sounds like a 70s fuck song. The other one sounds like a 80s roller rink song. Mm-hmm. Um, su- super interesting. 
but you can't really work out to that. So uh, I've been going to like these weird workout playlists on like SoundCloud and like uh, iTunes now has okay. like these mixes and shit like mm-hmm. that. Spotify does too. And um, so I'll try to put on somebody else's shit. Old school DMX came on. Okay. Arf, arf. Like, dude, DMX, come on, dude. <laughs> I forgot how many hits that guy had before he started yeah. smoking crack. Yeah. Amazing. He was at, where'd you spot him? Coachella? At the Kanye? No, yeah, he was at the Kanye. Yeah, he was pre- preaching. He's a preacher preaching. now. So. Oh, he was like full on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's uh, pre- That's what jail does to you. You find God. Speaking of. Yeah. Oh, you didn't watch it. What? Which? The jailbirds. Yeah. You I got to, more messages You want to talk post. about that? Because you, you're the dot queen. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're the podcast queen and you're the dot queen. But a lot, look, that's a, that's a big segment of our audience. Tell them about this new Netflix thing because everybody messaged in and they were like, what? This yeah, was amazing. They were in. What was it? So Jailbirds is a documentary series on uh, women's, mainly women's correctional facility in Sac, Sacramento. Okay. Sac Town. Sac Town, yeah. You got you got caught there in the middle of going nickname or like street slang or the actual name of the city. So the best part of the show is I just feel like I could use this slang that they use in real life. Like under the blades. Kind of. <laughs> like meet me at the bowl. Like I'll holler at you over the bowl. What's the bowl? So they talk toilet? to each other through the toilet toilet bowl. How is that possible? Well, they have to bail it out. What up? So to- <laughs> Did you just throw up a gang sign to the, the folks watching to bail on YouTube? It out, blood. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh shot amazing. It's not I don't really I'm not super into the lock 'em up shows, locked up, blah blah blah. Locked like, up abroad. Locked and, up with sixty yeah. days in, all of these. I'm not super into those. But yeah. this documentary somehow they got crazy access um into this jail to everything. The shots are beautiful. They yeah. make it look actually good in this dingy monochromatic like they make the jail look good yeah i don't like know if that's positive not good but like a good shot you know oh, okay. color wise right. and like right. it's amazing what they did sure but the slang and they break it down for you and everything yeah so i feel like i can like i feel like i could make it in jail for at least 10 days in that in sack <sighs> oh in sack town okay gotcha. oh it's pretty hardcore you no know, shit so how, why do you think you could make it? Is the Cause question. I've learned in this show, yeah. you learn all the things. Okay. I so mean, let's, all the let's things. go down the list. What are the things for people who haven't seen this? What's, what's the thing? So what's the first key? So you, boom. first key is commissary. You need okay. to have money on your books. Okay. So if I go in, obviously you're putting money on the books for me, for you. Yeah. So that I can get regular food, then trade for other things. Okay. Right. Yep. That's the main thing. So the food is the currency. Sure. Um, or coffee. Coffee's huge. You get, you get coffee at commissary you get like as well? Instant, yeah, instant okay. coffee. So you can trade coffee for all kinds of things. Gotcha. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. If you want to start your day, you need some coffee. Yeah. I, I know that. who to hang out with, who to not mess with, right? Right. Who to get in with, how to conduct myself. If I want to talk to somebody, a male which I wouldn't do. Right. But I'd know how to help someone else do it by bailing out the toilet bowl. How, like how, you how are you going to talk to a male? So the, these girls have full on relationships because the seventh floor is the male unit and they are, I think two down. So what they do is really, they, yeah. So they are talking through the pipes to the guys in the cell right above them. Okay. And then sending notes through. Fishing, okay? You tie the t-shirts through the shit. Through the, yeah, through the- um, Poop hole. Toilet pipes, yeah. Yep. And so they're like, they fish it through and then they get these little things that the guys have made them or letters, things like this. But they've got to pick off the shit. Yeah, I know how to make Pruno now in a bag. Bruno. Is that, Bruno. That's, is that wine? It's jail wine, yeah. Ah. So, good. I'm good, right? Toilet I have wine. wine. Yeah. I have Fritos. That's time. Pretty much all you need right there. Time on my hands. Some of them look like they had tablets. 
with earphones. Don't know how you get that, but I'm sure I'd find a way. Um, the main thing is money on your books. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Because you can trade. You can be the person that even if I want to make friends with everyone, I could just like give them a bunch of honey buns. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. But then you don't want to be a bitch, right? Then you don't want to be walked all over and be a bitch. Yeah. So how do you, how do you avoid that, James? That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. You're going to have to go back to the thinking tank. With you think you, you can knock somebody out in there? In jail? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They break it up pretty quickly. But yeah. Well, that, I mean, so I would it's be, about getting that first know, punch in. Exactly. So knowing that someone's going to break it up, I think I could get to somebody and throw the first punch and then be like ripped away by the guard and be like, I was gonna. Yeah. I would have. I would have sewn your cunt up. Right. Too far? I'd take that too far? No, that's probably right up. Yeah, that's right what you would the, probably need to right say Right up in the there. alley. The other thing I learned from this documentary is I always, I like to think maybe there's some people in jail that shouldn't be there, right? You, they got you, wrong. Like, you like to think that everyone in jail shouldn't be there. No, I like to think I li- I'm into wrongful convictions on the death sentence, life imprisonment right. level to where people full on got wrongfully accused right right but in these smaller jails with these drug offenses stealing cars shooting people attempted murder that's what so this is a jail it's not even prison so the most people are doing is 180 days right okay so it's these offenses that's like they have prior stuff and it's whatever in this facility i learned that everyone in there is supposed to be (laughs) <laughs> do you know what I mean well, if that one way or another whether it's the people that you so, which I always say whether it's the people that you associate yourself with sure the you know the circumstances that you put yourself in yeah you know if you're with somebody that's going to steal a car and you want to be like I didn't know I didn't know right right you knew you knew and you need to go to jail yeah you know so th- that kind of thing and they're all supposed to be there no shit um, here's the, here's the surprising thing to me. So they're all only 180 days and they know it in there. That's the most that I saw on there. Uh, so it's well, like, there's the reason why you're able to get shots and all that other shit for six months. People aren't going to fuck shit up that bad. Right. 180 days is six months. Yeah. But what do you mean? They're not going to fuck shit up that bad. You, you're not going to murder they're your waiting cellmates. for their case. So like they're, this is the place where they're waiting. So oh, oh, some gotcha, of them gotcha, gotcha. Go, I thought you meant they were seven. I saw someone get months. seven years. You got know, it, you're got in it, got this okay. like holding pattern right. and you do get days added on. If you fuck up, yeah. you keep getting days added on. That's, that's what on I'm whatever. saying. So yeah. I, I don't think you would be that aggressive in there knowing that, hey, and it's your not case is coming up. That aggre- they're not that aggressive. There was a couple fights, but mainly it is contraband. You know, you get days for fishing stuff through the toilet bowl you get days for pruno you get days for fighting like they try and nip things at the you know the bud pretty much yeah at the shaft they try to put it in there my thing is this right relationships are the craziest to me that's that i was just about to say that that that's that was that's the wildest shit of all time like i'm not throwing a sock down a toilet Mm -hmm. and then digging that out through two floors worth of shit and or piss to get a fucking note or a a stick figure made out of popsicle sticks Mm -hmm. from some you know other fucking prisoner aboard to be like oh we got this amazing relationship yeah with my guy for 90 days like you can't go 90 days without what having some kind of relationship with some dude you know can they bone in there no. Yeah. What's you the You don't point? even see them. Yeah. What's the point? You're literally just talking through the bowl. What's the fucking point? Through the bowl. Yeah. What's the fucking how'd point of all him? that? How'd you meet him? Through the bowl? Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you meet your mom? Through the bowl? Yep. She did six. She did a bid for six. Mm-hmm. I did 12, but we met through the bowl and we were able to make a go but of it. But there's some really, that's where the good drama, reality show drama comes in is, um... They will even have relationship drama with people not even seeing each other. They'll start talking. They'll get moved cells and then they'll start talking to the guy that's above them and then piss this girl off because she was with him. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's all contingent on where your cell is, Jeez. who you get to talk to. It's crazy. I'd fucking. You all deserve to be in there. Yeah. I mean, deserve. That's complete lunacy. Because you I, think about these people lunacy. on fucking the outside and you're just like, what is your life? 
Yeah. Like really, what is your life? What's yeah, yeah, it yeah. going to actually be? Like, I don't have high hopes for you at all. Right. And I don't, and I also can't tell if it's helping them or hurting them because they have to make this whole other society inside jail to be hard, to be cool, to like break the rules. So it's, they're not really getting rehabilitated. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole nother gang system no. inside. Then they go out and it's like the same mentality and they have to be fucking cool in here and cool in here. And the way to be cool in these two, the streets or jail. Right. Is to fuck up. I don't have high hopes. No, I, I, and I don't either. And it's like, you know, you look at some of these people and you're just like, dude, can we just put them on a fucking island? It's this cycle though, but I don't tear know. tear each other's faces off. I don't know if it's intentional or not. Like I can't tell if they are trying like everyone says, like trying to just keep these people in poverty and incarceration and in this circle. You know, I don't know. I can't tell if it's on purpose. I just don't know what the benefit of that would be. But Well, you, you take this guy, uh, the, the, the guy that we were talking about, we did a show about it called Murder on My Mind. Yeah. The rapper, right? Uh, YWN Melly. Mm-hmm. Um, but you take him. This is a perfect example, okay? Dude had just done a track with Kanye. Right. Um, was on his way, did a million interviews, all this other shit. And then he killed his two best friends like months afterwards. Yeah. It's like, what, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. How, how is, how does money not win out in this amazing life versus, you know what? I think I'm going to kill my buddies. I think I'm going to kill my buddies today. Now, see, now if something did something fucked up to you, you know, I'm the first one to say, let's murder that motherfucker. Sure. Like, I have no problem with that. Nor, like, if you murdered somebody, right? right? And if you, as long as you came home and said they deserved it, I'd protect you. I wouldn't say shit. I'd try to get you to where you needed to be, right? right. right. Uh, but the other shit, I'm like, man, what the fuck? The fuck is that? Mm-hmm. You know? Like, uh, like, Aaron Hernandez was another one, too. Where yeah. It was just like, bro, you had $30 million and, like, you couldn't stop murdering? Yeah. Well, you couldn't stop trying to impress the wrong people. So what's going to impress your thug, his thug friends, right. Aaron, Aaron Hernandez. was doing was, these yeah, things these and like, it wasn't cool to be a successful football player. And that's the thing is like you, you oppress yourself. Yeah. You I oppress look, yourself by trying to impress the wrong people. And I think on a smaller scale, I think that happens in high school a lot um, where you know, look, you're not murdering people, but I think, don't you, you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, at least in my opinion, I look at, cause I don't, I don't talk to too many people from high school really. Mm-hmm. Um, I, cause I think a lot of them, like when you have groups and, and all of that stuff, right. And you, and you stay, I felt like some people were just trying to stay and hang out with the fucking cool crowd that used to be cool in high school. Right. Like I was, yeah. po- I was popular as shit, but like I, I knew in my mind that high school wasn't your end-all be-all. Right. And if you were stuck in that world and stayed like that, trying to impress your friends from high school in your area, you really can't do that much with your life. Right. Like as a human being. It depends you on don't grow. who and how you want to impress them. So yeah. if, being, if what would impress them is like being the coolest, richest guy, whatever, then cool. But it depends on who you're trying to impress. If you're, in tri- if you're trying to impress the fucking druggies... Yeah, 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 yeah. You will impress them, yeah. but by being a piece of trash, right? So <laughs> that's all it is. And since we're, we're on this subject and we started this today, started at the top of the show with this of, of like your kid ending preschool, there is, I, like, I'm going to be different as a father and sit down and tell him like, hey, he, here's the stitch with all of this. Like high school isn't the end all be all. Mm-hmm. It's going to be rad and try to have the best experience you, you, you can, you know, if you're popular and all that other shit. Yeah, it's going to be a fucking blast, right? Mm-hmm. But- College is going to be way better. Like you're going to have a way better time in college than you are in high school. You're going to meet some new friends and that's going to be awesome. And then after college. It's even going to be better than that. It's going to be better if you're rich enough. If not, it's going to be shitty. I'm going to have that conversation too. Of like, hey man, it's going to be a, a hard long life if not. And I think that's why everybody, everybody, and, and not, you know, not just us. I'm talking about all the listeners, everybody else. Everybody's still chasing that old mighty dollar. Because you realize life could be a lot fucking easier if you were rich, right? Right. If you could own your or own just stuff. Money, money, M- money. Yeah. Whether it's rich or enough to do the things you want to do, yes. I don't know. But and money, that's money. And if you achieve that, and, 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 uh, yeah, I, love I know, is not. And it's not. 
But if you achieve that, you know, after you get out of college or let's say you don't go to college, right? So you go to the military or you, you, you're, uh, whatever it is, man, in this life, right? And you're done with it. And you're like, man, I want to make some, I want to make millions. I want to make millions of dollars. Like, and you're able to achieve it. Mm. Holy shit. That life is awesome. Right. It's awesome. It, I mean, it really is. There was this gal on a Today Show just now, or Good Morning America, that would um, disagree with you, right? She wrote a book called Limitless. Oh, God. So it's another gal who spent all this time in the corporate world, made all this money, didn't make her happy. Yeah. I'm going to write a book. Because she's, she's rich enough to she's re- rich. retire. Yeah, that's, so f- that's what I hate You're about so all this shit. skewed. Yes. You don't understand what it's like to not have no. money. You can't tell somebody to leave their job if they're not happy. So I'm going to write a book that's, I'm working on it. It's called Get the Fuck Back to Work, right? <laughs> and it's really about trying to figure out if it's a midlife crisis, um, finding joy and pride in whatever you do. And stop fucking trying to be happy. Yeah. As your goal. Because <laughs> you will, if that's your only goal to make yourself happy. Yeah. You will never be. No, you won't. You won't. I'm working on it. Yeah. Shopping it to a couple of people. I, uh, I, look, I, I spent, you know, the weekend uh, up in Cleveland. Sure. Uh, one, one of my, I know. Lovely, one of your favorite. It, it, you had little, our timeshare out there? Or? Yeah. Our, our fucking one bedroom we're sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I was in Cleveland, Ohio, and it is every bit as unimpressive as it was 20 years ago, the last time I'd been. Cool. And... But they said they were like, oh, it's a revitalization and we've done that. No, you really haven't done done that much. Or maybe just LeBron leaving caused everybody to leave. Whatever it was, case may be. Um, I was up there. One of my best friends from college uh, was going through some cancer treatments and all that other stuff. And we stayed up late talking one night about all of this, this exact thing. Mm-hmm. And because he's in the same position that, that I am, I feel in life, where love my kids, love my wife. I have a great relationship with all of you guys. So does he. And uh, um, when, he, when the cancer hit for him, and he talked about, you know, fuck, man, you can't work, you can't do this, or whatever. You don't really think about those things where you're like, oh, shit, that's right. You, you can't go into work every day. You've got to get treatments every day. There is no, like... And you realize that the actual act of going to work, whatever it may be, doing something, actually brought you more happiness than you thought. Yes. And so he was telling me, because cause he had a job that he loved. Right. And then he, do, he didn't have a job that he, he liked that much um, back and forth at the mm-hmm. time. And he goes, man, I'm going to be honest. Like I, it was the job that I loved versus this new thing or whatever. And he goes, but if you have money for all of this stuff, then you don't really matter. It, it doesn't really matter. I could spend more time with my kids and my wife and all this other stuff. And, uh, and he goes, man, it's weird. It's weird how the, the whole thing revolves around that. And even this, like he looked at cancer as the same thing of like, this stops my life and working and all that stuff. And he goes, that's what's shitty about it as well. Is like, you know, not only do I have cancer, but then it prevents me from making money. And he's like, yeah. it's fucked. Yeah. It's absolutely fucked. And you realize, fuck, if I could just go to any job, painting, an office job, anything, if I could just go somewhere, right? So yeah. it's like having, having a job, whatever it may be, being grateful for that because there's people that can't even do that, right? Yes. Because of cancer, because of whatever, like, or losing their job, you know? Um, so just, I, I say it too much, but. Yeah. Yeah. Now, either way, I look, I, I, the, the last thing I will say, and let's put a button on this before we get to sponsors, because again, we've just, we always just crush it and then just not. Not worry about sponsors. <laughs> no, they get there. They like it in the middle more anyway. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll say about all of it is uh, it, 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 at least it gave me a perspective of like, you know, especially as you get older, like even though it was a shitty event that brought all of us together because all my friends from college got back together, like that was the one thing that forced all of us to actually get back together, have these conversations. It's nice to talk to people who you grew up with or your own age about the same struggles, 
and things and realize that everyone's going through shit. And, uh, you know, as you get older, friendships and all that stuff start to fade because you have families and it's, dude, it is fucking hard, man. Just to carve out three or four days in your schedule. We all do it on our phones, right? We all text each other on group text. We've got to go on that vacation. Mm -hmm. We've got to get together and do that one thing. We got it. And you never end up doing it because life takes over and everybody's crazy busy and I understand it. But it was nice for just, you know, Two and a half days of like, hey, great, we're all together. We can all hang out. We can all rap about the same problems and all that other shit. And even that helps. Mm -hmm. Just getting together and talking about people who are going through similar shit. And uh, everybody's got the same answer. Yeah. That's when you find out. So. Yeah. Uh, e either way, I, even though I didn't enjoy Cleveland, I, uh, I enjoyed the time together and, and, and all that other stuff. War of... A beanie in a in a full coat. Yeah, what the fuck? Crazy. It was forty eight degrees. Forty eight degrees there. Oh, Cleveland. Yo, Cleveland. Get it together. And then I read, uh, jokingly, like, um, <laughs> as soon as, as soon as I touched down, opened up my phone, was just kind of checking the top stories. Top story was the NFL draft. Two years is going to Cleveland. And I'm like, oh, oh no. beautiful. <laughs> we can go to that one. You want to go to that one? Oh, that city's going to go bug fuck. What it, Did what you hear it about this baseball player? Which one? The one that got called up from the minors to the Mets. No. Oh, uh, yesterday. Okay. Day before. So he. I was flying. Yeah. 38. 38 years old. Playing in the minor leagues. Random teams. Mets call him up. Yeah. To come play the game. He takes an Uber, $200 Uber ride from Pittsburgh or something like this yeah. to go to the game. He, he, he and the Uber ride were pump, pumped up, pumping up. He's like, are you serious? You're going to like play for the Mets right now? Goes in, gets, to the gets in the third inning. He's lost. He's lost in the building. He tries to go in. Finally gets in there. Hits a three-run home run. You're kidding. Nope. And I was like, what? <laughs> Shut up. I mean, the dream. That's like... That's a dream, right? Can that happen anywhere else than in baseball? I don't know. No. But I, they call you up like that. You take an Uber ride. It's like that. And it's, it's the Mets, too. So it's a chill. They're like, hey, call him in. Yeah, Whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's Nobody's a great story. Well, I'll, I'll do that on the sports show. Yeah. Like I said, we, I just got back. So I've, got, I've been kind of out of it. But that's great. But I was just like, holy shit. Yes. Because you think about, think about in the Uber ride being like, what are you doing? I'm just going to pinch hit real quick for the, right? <laughs> so what do they do now? Are they going to like keep him around? I mean, he's a, it's a story now. I don't know. Whatever. You know. We'll follow it. Follow it on the sports show. Because yeah, I will. I will. I'm like into it. Um, this, this, uh, not that exact thing, but there was a childhood friend of mine, um, Bobby Scales, who was in the minors for years and years and years and years and years. And then got called up and, and got to finally play like that. And like, I remember I was I, cause like, he did well or whatever. He, yeah. And I, he hit like a double. He didn't hit a home run, but like, I, but just I got emotional. I got, I get emotional watching it. And I was like, Holy yeah, shit. No. If, I'd, if I'd have known this story going into the game and watch that, no lie. I probably would have cried in the stands. Oh my God. So yeah. Watch the, the video of it when you, when we get done, but I will. Um, yeah, I don't, Emotional. Emotional. That's great. Because you just think of the whole time. And even getting lost in the building, like, that would be what I would do, right? I have this one opportunity, and I'm, like, in there. And I'm, like, where do I go? I'm, like, asking people yeah. late, right? You go into these stadiums. I don't, I don't think people realize the tunnels underneath this shit where oh, it's, dude, like. Oh, and they're, like, park at whatever B. And you're, yeah. like, and you're trying to tell people, I'm playing. I'm playing. They're, like, yeah, sure, buddy. Yep. And you're, like, no, I'm supposed to go in there. So it's, yeah, like, yeah, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. 38 too like that's a you know and they treat you like shit too oh god they'd that, be like whatever bud yeah yeah we get on uh we get on the field for some of these uh a lot of these events for the drinking bro sports show and I, I remember i walked up to get my first set of field passes right and they were just like right you're going on the field you know mm -hmm. and i was like they were like who who left you the tickets and i was like julio jones yeah, and they're like, oh, oh my god, oh, okay, I'm so sorry, sir. Whatever, right? Yeah. Even the, when you get those passes, they don't help you through all the no, no, stadium no. and all that shit, no, no, no. right? And so you go they down there. They don't get there. paid enough for that. We got shit. lost to shit, man. Yeah. Now imagine if you're in an Uber trying to get into the game and you're excited and you're, you're running around. You're telling him where to park, oh, like you're freaking boy. out. 
they had to get him a uniform really quick, get him out there. And he <laughs> did that. And I'm just like, holy shit. Talk about under pressure. I'd say what? Look up this guy's name while I do the sponsors and then uh, find him for me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yep. No computer in sight in front of Jabe's. If you're watching, subscribe, subscribe on YouTube. Um, if you're, you can watch Jables just bang on a, a fake keyboard here, essentially. Um, first and foremost, sponsor wise, they do pay for this whole shit to be on the air. BlackRifleCoffee.com. A little BRCC in that cup. I already had mine and now I need some water, by the way. You ever drink so much coffee, you feel dehydrated? That's how I felt. That's what it does to you. Is it really? Yeah, you need to drink water, Boy, coffee, water, coffee. Water. I, I had a little too much BRCC today. I did. Full disclosure. I needed to get up and out. I just got back from Cleveland. Another, I'm not even going to go into the fucking airport experiences anymore because they're all horrific now. And it's just Oh, like, yeah, we can't even. I'm not, I can't do it anymore. I'm not going to waste your fucking time. It's gone with the, the 80s air, airport comedy, I think, where it's just like, it's the same fucking story every time now. Same. Right? I, where I it's don't. Like, I got delayed. I got thing. They told me some shit. Then they had to get gas. And they, you know, it was like. I'm on this. Stu- and speaking of coffee, I'm on this stupid fucking flight because we live in a small town. So we pretty much, there's only a few cities that are direct flights, right? Yeah. And definitely not from here. No. And um, so I, I, I go to uh, Charlotte a lot because that's, that's usually the hub here of like, all right, you either go to Charlotte or Atlanta yeah. and then you go to the rest of the cities. Charlotte. The, for whatever reason, it is a massive airport and they have no trams or shuttles or anything. So you have to run through the end. You're never, ever where you need to be in that fucking thing. And I race to this plane because, again, it's it's late again, delayed an hour to Charlotte. And then they get I, they we all board and they're like, you've got to board board as fast as you can. And they were like, they'll cut you the fuck off. Like if they yes. get everybody in in time, your flight is leaving. Yeah, you're gone. They want you out of there. It's right. Like, Dude. <laughs> I have fucking time, but yeah. Whatever your flight time is, it's not really your flight time. It's a lot earlier. Than oh, that. and also when they tell you, we're going to be landing a little bit early. Oh, are you? You're not. So that you can wait in line. To on get the tarmac. To the, don't you, ever you, tell me you're going to get me there that. early. Nope, because then, then we just sit on the tarmac. Exact same thing happened to us, right? And we get on the next flight to go home to Wilmington. All I want to do is come home, see you guys, all that stuff. Flight delay is all that other bullshit, the usual. And I'm just like, oh, bro, this is supposed to be an easy flight from Cleveland back. It was not. And then they get on and they were like, I'm so sorry, but, you know, we've got to wait for the food truck and the refreshments, you know, because we want you guys to have water and coffee and all that stuff. And this is the thing. And we're everybody on the, on the plane is like, yo, this is a 40 minute flight from Charlotte to Wilmington. We're good. We're good. If you don't have a water bottle, don't, we're you're all die. good. I'll, I'll share portions like we're in, you know, Alive, the no movie big. Alive, you no big. You gotta have your coffee on that yeah. seven o'clock flight at night. So uh, you have problems. Uh, everybody starts bitching, and finally, like the, I guess the captain or somebody must have heard it. He goes, "We're just gonna leave," and the whole plane erupted in applause, and it was just like great. Because no matter who you are, if you're that asshole who orders coffee on that forty minute flight, I, I just because I, I feel bad for the stewardesses at that point. Just coffee instead, the- man. Yeah. Go to blackriflecoffee.com. Get it. Just get some instant packages. Make it your fucking self because it's better than. Have it in your pocket. Yep, that's it. They'll have hot water. All of this was about Black Rifle. They've got instant now. So they have it. Great. Get some hot water for yourself. Don't fucking bother these people on this bullshit 40 minute flight for. Well, I need a cup of coffee. Why don't you make me a cup of coffee on a 40 minute flight? Get fucked. Yeah. Get fucked. Go to blackriflecoffee.com instead. Use the promo code REVOLUTION. For twenty percent off, instant K cups bags. You're good to go. Next up, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros mm, 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 on the Ross Patterson mm, Revolution mm, Instagram page yesterday. You probably saw the stories. It's, we we ordered some more ghost pillows. How many of those fucking things do we just keep ordering? They're the best though. They are the best. They are the best. And we're doing. I personally have three that I sleep with. Yeah, I, everybody does. Surrounded. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you're in a cocoon of. That's how J-Lo said to do it, so that's how I'm doing it. Is it really? hmm <laughs> So she sleeps I can apparently see that. all surrounded on her back. I don't do that, but she sleeps. Pretty and close. She said it helps with her wrinkles. So imagine sleeping next Oof. to her, so she's all... It's like she's, a corpse. She's, yeah, she's basically propped up yeah. like a corpse and surrounded pillows. 
Huh. Good I could see her doing that. It's good enough for J-Lo. Yeah, I could see her doing that. That's not mm-hmm. a surprise. No. Look, if it's good enough for J-Lo, it's good enough for you. You can get these ghost pillows at ghostbed.com. Finest pillows in the land. Dude, their, their bundle package is out, right? $7.99. Um, and if you're military first responder, 15% off forever. It's at the bottom of the page. Click it and you're good to go. That's a massive donkey dick type of uh, sale going on there. Mm-hmm. And if you're a regular human like myself, right? A civvy is what they call it in the streets. Oh. I think. I don't know. I what do they call I it at the ball? Civilians, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen civilians locked up or anything um, like you do. <laughs> uh, no, if you're a regular human, though, because they, they were giving uh, free ghost pillows away for a while. Now they're giving away free sheets. We just got those sheets. Um, those, I mean, that's a banger of a deal, dude. Yeah, dang. We need to get some more. No shit. So, look, we're doing a huge, uh, massive deal with them. Uh, from June on and uh, we're excited to tell you about it but we love this company and and everybody uh, loves this company the last thing I'm going to say about this at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros because they're combined I host both shows they're combined is if you go to the page uh, this is also one of the biggest things I I love about them it's actual testimonials from the people from the show who are buying this so you're not getting strangers like these are all listeners who are buying shit, Mm -hmm. that's the reviews. So when you go to that page, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, you're reading reviews from other listeners. So that way you're not, you don't know it's bullshit. You know, it's not like fake reviews. You ever read shit and you're like, oh, um, this is is fake reviews. All the time. Um, The fake reviews. Yeah. Yeah, Well, even Amazon, you could get put, put fake reviews. This is from the listeners of the show though. So like you really can't fuck with that because they're all like, it's all like insider stuff from the show. So I love it. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And there's two people in the neighborhood that are going to get some. They were like, we've looked around and actually between Casper, Lolbed, Lisa, all of this, like they have the best prices. They do. At ghost bed. They so. do. And it's, it's, and it's, a, it's a better, better bed. It's a better so product. So we're amped about it. We're doing a massive deal with them. We're going to do the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. 36 months pay as you go. No interest either. I, nobody's doing that shit, which is amazing. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Lemon, orange, grape, and orange. Um, big fan. Big fan of Strike Force Energy because the summer's here, man. We're raging this weekend for Memorial Day. Don't think this isn't going in the vodka. That's the only, that's come on vodka sodas. When you're you're in your 30s, right? That's pretty much all it is. You can't have any real fun. So vodka sodas is pretty much as fun as it gets. Otherwise, otherwise I'd be drinking fucking Margs all day. Oh yeah, Just full of sugar and saying fuck it. Daiquiris throw, can't do it, guys. No, can't throw the, do throw it. The, no peeners. Can't throw a peener on there, you know? I'm sure you can make some kind of frozen strike force drink that would be comparable. Maybe. Uh, but throw, throw that in there and it'll give you some energy and it's better than Red Bull. You don't have to carry that around in your fucking cooler. And then on Yeti. their Instagram too, on Strike Force uh, Energy Instagram, they'll give you recipes like once yes. a week for yeah. cool, cool drinks. drinks to try, sugar-free and all that. So... Check them out. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Get it for the summer. And it comes in the box. It's just like on Jable's desk right there. Same as you get in 7-Eleven, which cool is red. Cool for the summer. Cool for the summer. Now this is what you came for. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right, kids? <laughs> Oh, man. I saw you had your headphones. Yeah, I got my headphones on today. So I wanted to make it real sweet. Oh, boy, you did. You did. <laughs> Are you wearing it like a nightie, like some form of negligee today? No, it's a shirt. You look sexy. It's a shirt. You look sexy, but it looks like it's a nightie. It's on trend and on brand. Okay. You look sexy. It looks, looks uh, like a little nightie, you know? You got maybe, all dolled up for me. Maybe I just woke up and. Yeah, I like it. My... I like when you whore yourself up for me. I enjoy it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you and the million people watching. Or 1.6. 1. We even, need more subscribers on YouTube. Anything. Yeah, yeah. We need more subscribers on YouTube. Go to fucking YouTube and subscribe to the show. Go to straightrazors.com if you want to have a fucking smooth, baby, uh, clean face. Everybody asks why you're, I look like this. It's, uh, for real, it's just a nice shave. That's all it is. Just a good, a good old fashioned razor. I'm also one of those people that doesn't have a five o'clock shadow in the middle of the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, that helps too. It does. But at straightrazors.com, you can get kits. They got beard oils, uh, shampoos, conditioners, you name it, across the board. Finest shaving products in the land for men. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off, which is a huge savings. And you can get uh, a nice shaving kit for your dad for Father's Day. Get it engraved. Don't be a dick. They do it. I think they do it for free. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, I think they do. Um, and then it, look, and then the new book's out. Thank you for my service. Got to write that about my beef fry, Matt. Best, uh, buy it in hardback. That'll get us on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, dude, that book is fucking hilarious, man. We're about to record the audio book, and I was re- rereading it. It's great. It's great. Um, speaking of fucking hilarious, people really loved these, this live rendition last night of uh, All in the Family. Did they? People were oh. talking about it, man. I don't get into shit like that. And they, did, they also did the Jeffersons. Mm-hmm. So... Well, here's how I get into it. So Jimmy Kimmel, I think, put this whole thing together and he said he's not changing it in any way. It's going to be the same kind of jokes, the same kind of humor as it was back in the day. Yeah. And it's not it's going to be offensive. Do you think about what they used to talk about in All in the Family? Well, it was brutal. The theme song alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh I, but that's yeah, what I that's like, what I loved about those shows. Like they were ruthless. And I liked dude, the Jeffersons was the same way. Exactly, but in the other way. So yeah. he was just like, if, you know, he doesn't sound like the Jimmy that has been talking on his show uh, against Trump and all of this shit, but he's basically like, you know, these he's, are the yeah, shows. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, because yeah, he's, he's become like, a political the shows, asshole these days. Right. Yeah. Totally against Trump. Totally, Roseanne, totally against her, all of that. She was doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's basically like, if you are going to be offended by, you know, how the shows used to be, then... You know, sorry. Yeah. These are shows that I grew up watching and they're going to be the same and they're controversial. And I was like, OK, I mean, I don't know what you're trying to say, but that's OK. Yeah. I, look, I don't I just these one night fucking things where you're doing. I, I just I don't get into them. I just get nervous. Right. I get nervous for them. It's a live thing. It's live. Right? Yeah. Like Jamie Foxx fucked up one of his lines last night. Right. I watched it for a little bit and people were dying laughing. It was funny. Um, but, you know, I, I'm good on this. I'm good on this whole because this is a new thing they're doing in the summers, and right. I, it started what three years ago. Usually it's musicals, mm-hmm. and then they'll you know they'll do a live musical and they'll do it each for the East and West Coast. And it's a little different and great, and it's just like eh, I don't really, I don't, I just don't fucking care. Uh, I don't need to see it live. Like I don't need that extra anxiety about it. Yeah. Just record it. Yeah, I'll watch it. The other thing is, is like, dude, why not just make shows like this? If you want to be Make the old school comedy. The just make the old way school that comedy. We can is by saying if, somebody else hey, did it. Hey, this is how they were just doing the exact same way. So if you're offended, then yeah. sorry because they can't just do it. Can't just say it. Yeah, I guess, man. I, either way, the, the that this new trend of like we're gonna do these live shows or whatever. Like, I just don't fucking care. I don't care either. I do love a I do love a Woody Harrelson though. In I, anything, look, so do I. But I don't. I'm. I'm As good Archie on it. Bunker, like, uh, come on. I'm good on it. I, I, I tr- also I, don't know why makes he me has to do it. I yeah. don't either. But a lot of them did. So like Jamie Foxx did because it. Will Jimmy, Ferrell. Jimmy Kimmel gave him the fucking the the call, and the, he said they call. They all called me right back. I bet they did, Jimmy. I bet you the money was sick. I wonder. Money I wonder what they got for that night. Just that one night. Exactly. I bet it was a big paycheck. Exactly. I'm sure it was. But yeah, you call Jimmy Kimmel back. Like you don't want to be on his bad side, right? I yes or no? I, I don't, don't know. So me personally thinking about it, because again, like I, I used to love, and I, and I say again, by the way, because we've talked about this on another show, about my love of late night comedies. I used to watch all of them. Now the only one I can get down with is Fallon pretty much. Right. Because he's not political. Political. I, right. I just, dude, I'm, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I, we talk politics. I hear enough political shit during the day. I'm, I'm, go- I'm good on it by the end of the night. You know, I'm fine. I just want to relax and laugh. I don't... I would have said something totally different years, years ago as an actor, right? Um, I, I would have said, yeah, get me on Col- Colbert. Could give two fucks about Colbert. Right. Um, same with uh, Kimmel. D- don't care. S- so what? I, you know, uh, if I'm not on Kimmel to promote my next project or whatever. And the weird thing is, I think it's because between the, the podcast, the two podcasts, and, and this is going to sound like me being an asshole, but we have more viewers and listeners. Viewers. 
Like, and the goal would be more to be on Rogan than it would to be on yes. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. And I, and I've had, I had this, I've had this conversation over and over and over again with people in the streets, you know, who come up to me all the time and listen to the shows and they're like, man, when are you going to be on Rogan? No one ever ask when I'm going to be on Kimmel. Right. I've, I don't hear that anymore. It's when are you going to be on Rogan? That has been the defining factor of like, oh, shit. Uh, There's still got to be some part of you that is because we grew up with the traditional media of like, it's not real unless it's on TV. Yeah. There's some part of me that's like, that would really add some legitimacy with a certain group of people that don't even know what a fucking podcast is. With right? a certain group of people. So a friend of mine was on Seth Meyers two weeks ago, right? That's okay. the late show after uh, Jimmy Fallon. Do I know? Yes. Um, you, you know her. And uh, she was promoting her new thing, uh, her new movie. Um, it's, it's Desi. Okay. I, I guess I can say it. Um, why wouldn't you say it? Well, here's the thing. Is it I don't, aired yet? Or? Yes, it's aired. All of it's oh. aired. But like, here's why I say this. Of like, because of that project and because of where it is on Comedy Central and, and you know, it's Trevor Noah and everything. Mm-hmm. I, I, me personally, I, I can't stand Seth Meyers' show. It's just right. It's super. I try to watch it. For, he gets good guests though. So gets it's great like, guests. But it's but here's the thing. Everybody's leans so left that it's like yeah. Yes, you're going to get great guests. So I tried to watch. I, I, I did watch the one she was on. Yeah. The opening monologue that he does because he doesn't stand and talk in front of an audience, right? He doesn't he do sits at the desk. Yeah, and he does it weekend update style like SNL. Okay, dude, it was. No lie, twenty minutes of just Trump, and I ju- I'm like really yeah. And I'm I I'm like, oh so my god! Bored. And I kept waiting for just something just else. Such an easy joke at this point. It's like not even that. It's just you're hearing the same manufactured joke fifty different times from fifty different talk show hosts. So it's like by the time I get to you at twelve thirty, bro, I've heard that joke thirty times today, or what, yeah. or, or some variation of it. Yeah. And you know, I, it, look, his ratings are aren't they're not much higher than ours. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. For Ross Patterson Revolution. Yeah. And it's like, man, yes, I used to look at that like that was validation. Like, oh, man, if you were on this. I know it's But it was not... different people at the time. And like the, the different people at the time. And I'll go through the lineup of it, right? Because this is what I used to get jacked off about. It wasn't Leno to me. Like that wasn't my dude, right? No, no, no. Um, Letterman. Letterman. Letterman was my guy. I, I had to be on Letterman. Still disappointed that, that that didn't happen. Yes. When Conan was on that late night, because Conan had that Seth Meyers show. It was perfect. Um, it was the best show. I loved it. He did whatever he wanted. Yes. Loved it. Um, it, it was, and to me, I wish he never would have taken, and he didn't have a choice probably, but to take that, take that Tonight Show job. Where he did it for a year, they fired him, and then they brought back Jay Leno, and it was just that was a whole fucking mess. And then he went to TBS, um, and the TBS show, like he's never recovered. No, from that. Um, that I was love a great Conan. podcast, though. Ugh. Yeah, but in the podcast world, he's number five. It's like he's great. He found he's great. a place. Yeah, he's but great. He doesn't want to be on he podcast just though. Kept, no, he hates it. He, he wants to, yeah, he wants to, he wants to be on TV and like his new format now on TBS is a half hour. He's wearing half a suit. It's just, it, it, all of it feels uncomfortable. Andy Richter's still there, but you're only talking to one guest for a half hour. It's like, dude, I don't, you don't need Andy Richter for anything at this point. He's just sitting there. I like having him in there. And then he has a Netflix show that he like travels around. I and, like that. Yeah. I watched he, that. He's, he's got a lot of, you know, irons, irons in the, in the fire. fire. I, but, um. So Conan was my dude, right? right? Still is. I love Conan. I'd be amped to go on Conan. Um, I don't like Seth Meyers. I don't like Jimmy Kimmel. I don't like Stephen Colbert. Uh, Corden, James Corden is fine. I don't like the format, though, where you go out on stage with all of the other guests. Where it's like, cool, yeah. you're all promoting different things. Why are we all sitting together talking about... It's, it's a hard Graham conversation Norton. to have. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't even want to do that on a podcast throw two actors from two different projects and no. have them talk about a movie that's coming out the same weekend. Or go down the line of their stories, the airline story. Yeah, and I feel like with Corden, Car- Carpool Karaoke was so good, is, and is so good, still so good. But it, that's all that it feels like anymore, where you're just like, all right, cool, I'll watch it for a Carpool Karaoke, well, but they, I won't watch for the guests. Right, well, they all are working for the clips. So the actual clips of Seth. Correct. Are 
higher rating than his actual show. Correct. Same with, right? Jimmy Fallon. But my point with Conan going to podcast is like, he's not an idiot. You no, know what I mean? Absolutely. Where he goes, I don't have this many here. It's a better, you know, yeah. I can get more listeners yep. than my fucking TV show on TBS, which to a lot of people is the only, you know, yeah. the only media. Like if you're not on TV, if you're not on. So I, I you know, going through it, uh, my dream list as an actor now mm-hmm. is down to one uh, or t- uh, two, I'll say. So uh, J- Jimmy Fallon's one. Um, and I would say the daily show, at least on the daily show, I know I'm going to have a fair conversation about things and it'll be, uh, like, I think Trevor Noah is a very smart guy. Um, I, you know, obviously don't, don't agree with his politics, but I still think the daily show is a prestigious thing that it's just like, all right, cool. Like, I feel like if I went on Colbert, you'd get railroaded, right? Yeah. Um, what about Stern? Oh, well, I love Howard Stern, but that's, that's a different format. That's radio. So. But he has the show, though, too, right? The show only airs on YouTube. Oh. So it's, he's like a podcast. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a podcast. Yes, I love Howard Stern. Right, right. And I all think right. all of us in this podcast world, all of us, can bow the fuck down to Howard Stern and realize without him, none of us would be real or, or any of this happening, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, because I didn't know any of this was possible at, the, at a level of, like, saying whatever truly whatever the fuck you want and like if he doesn't break that barrier on radio terrestrial and then go to Sirius XM because when when he went to Sirius XM and started doing this fucked up shit still on there but to another level where you could tell the guests you know you could say fuck and shit and Mm -hmm. then you know show porn stars like doing whatever they want you know Mm -hmm. that level of like oh my god um I think that was what told podcasters and Joe Rogan and everybody else like hey you can do whatever you want on a podcast. Like it's kind yeah. of the same format. And you're like, oh, all right, cool. Let's all the do shit this. Of, like dumb suits telling you what to say. Like yes. you don't have to do that. And I think all of it eternally will forever go back to Stern. Um, that that was really the guy who broke the mold. Podcast wise, you know, I, I know they always talk about Adam Carolla as like the godfather of podcasts and all that shit, which I don't know who started that, whatever. To me, It'll be Rogan in my book where it's just like, mm-hmm. man, that was, that was the first time it switched where, again, you didn't want to be on TV anymore. Everybody wants to be on Rogan and that's it. And that's all I fucking hear everywhere I go. Uh, but to me, like t- television wise, yeah, there's two. I, I would go, I mean, Conan, I would go on, um, obviously. And then uh, Fallon, I would be juiced off about, I'd be amped up about that. Like, oh my God. that'd be great. Um, I love Jimmy Fallon. Uh, I love his show. I love his format. I love that he always wants to have fun. Um, and then, uh, and then the podcast world, but, uh, and then, you know, the, again, the daily show, but just because that would be a super interesting conversation, um, that, that I, I feel like he hears everybody out and, and gives them a chance and everything else. So, yeah, yeah. um, and I think secretly you guys would agree on more things than probably, Probably. And um, I, I like having smart, intelligent conversations versus somebody who feels like they're smarter than you trying to bury you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember when that guy, uh, uh, Rizwan Verk, came on the show about the simulation hypothesis. He didn't know whether or not, like, because we were a comedy show or whatever. He was like, yo, man, is we're this, are you just going to make fun of me yeah. the whole time? And I, I always preface this with all the guests. I'm like, look, man, I'm never going to go after you unless you say something super fucked up and then I will. But, um, other than that, I, I, no, I'm, you took time out of your day to come on my show and vice versa. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go after you like that. Whereas Colbert, I don't feel does that. Mm-mm. I feel like it's, Hey, this is my show and I'm going to fucking bury you because you, you believe and in Remember X. when he was playing that character too, it was even worse. So yeah. The other show that he had where you knew you were going to get railroad, but it was like in a funny to show. Yeah. Yeah. And that some was almost of, better than the way he's doing it now, which is like, it's really him trying to railroad you yeah. in, in the complete different. So he was playing like a Republican character before. I thought it was funny. Sort of. Yeah, I did too. And I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed Jon Stewart. But those guys are all gone now. Um, mm-hmm. I also like Carson Daly show that was on late yeah. night. Um, that's done now. It's some other chick who took over and whatever. And it's just like, eh, uh, you know. Gosh, that was like, yeah. It is what it is. But um, I... I, I yeah, I podcast now. It's dude, Rogan's Rogan rules the world. And everywhere I go, it's when are you gonna be on Rogan? Um and I think Matt's gonna get on 
for the book. So that will be crazy and uh, and awesome. And, and would all that you stuff. guys be able to go on Stern ever? Man, I've, I tried. So with at night or yeah, with at night she cries. We got really really close. Mm-hmm. Um, but he doesn't like that gun stuff or what the. Yeah, I, I what was this? There was some reply. I think it. What was the answer that they said no to? It was something that we were like, "What the fuck, Stern?" No, it wasn't Stern. It was Andy uh, Andy Cohen on. Uh, oh, really? Yes, it was Andy Cohen who was just like, "I don't Sorry. like the filthy humor, like that type of stuff." It mm-hmm. was him. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Stern. Um, seems like Stern would be down for whatever he was. He'll just talk to you. Even if he doesn't agree with you, he'll talk to you. Yeah. 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 I think with Stern, I just wasn't famous enough. They didn't say that, but I, that was the feeling I got with Andy Cohen though. That was, that was, I don't like your content. That's what I got from that. Um, but with Stern, I I just think that I wasn't famous enough to be honest with you. Oh, speaking of Andy Cohen, there's a Bravo con. Is there really? That thing will sell the fuck out. In New York City, coming up. Yeah, I, that, that, that will I don't know. sell out beyond I every need to go or if I shadow go. of a doubt. I wish you could go and do interviews there. That would be hilarious. That'd be great. You, could get, you can get a low-level real housewife. You can get the San Antonio housewives probably interview. Well, are, they, are they, is that the Texicanas? Mm-hmm. Is, that the, is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, I, they would be fun to have on the show. I should go and try. Don't you think the, should I try? When is it? Yeah. Oh, did you look up the Mets player? Yeah. Um, Rajai Davis. Oh, Rajai Davis. Rajai Davis. Yeah. I, he's played on a couple of teams before. But yes, he, he has. Yeah. He's, I, I, he, but he, he was in used the, to be really, really fucking good. Um, right. So but they, he was, he was in the minors. Yeah. In like Pittsburgh for a while and 38 and thinking that it was like done. You know what it's I mean? It's funny that it was him. I know him. Oh. Um, uh, as a player, I don't know him as a person. Um, but uh, good for him. That's awesome. Yeah, he's been around for a long fucking time. And that's part of it too, is that you're just like, oh my gosh, like when you get the call, you were ready. Yeah. Uh, here, you know, it's funny. It just uh, like it just popped up on my screen here. This story. Um, this is great. Third inning, homers and first at bat. He arrived. That's yeah. That's right when he arrived. Wow. I mean, the, the uniform was like probably he was tucking in his shirt as he went out. <laughs> Is that awesome? Pinch hitting. Man. They didn't realize they even needed him until the beginning of the game. That's amazing. Um. <laughs> but gosh, when he hit. He's you from, know. you know what? We'll make him the revolutionary figure ah, of the day. Yes. That's great. Yes. Um, we'll do it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Russia Davis. The Mets need all the help they can get. 38 grew up in uh, Norwich, Connecticut, and he was he was a Mets fan growing up. So um, that is I mean, amazing. Come on. Found out that he had been called up at 5 p.m. and he thought the manager was joking, and uh, he was taking batting practice in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, in the cage, and he found out he was coming up, and uh, boom, got two hours later in an Uber. In an Uber. Lost in the stadium. <laughs> Eighth team in 13 years he's been playing. Uh, 262 lifetime hitter. Ah, oh, that's great. He played, yeah. Look, he played with Cleveland last year. Oddly enough, that's great. That's a great story. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. That's amazing. I love, I I love, love shit that like shit. that. So do I. So the, do thing I. Of, the thing of like experience and opportunity coming, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, of course he could do it. I don't know what happened to get him to the, you know, where he's sitting in the minor leagues, but he was ready. Yeah. And that fucking shit is like, dude, you did it, man. Yeah. When you had to do it. <laughs> but, but like I'm saying, what do they do now? Like, does he like continue there? Do they send him back or what happened? Ah, uh, yeah. Look, if you hit a homer, they'll keep you while you're hot. <laughs> Three runs. Yeah, yeah. 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 They'll keep you for a couple of days. They'll keep you for okay. a few days while you're hot. See what happens. Yeah. Why not? You want to ride the hot hand. Uh, Lakers did that with a guy, um, a journeyman too. Uh, and I think we made him the revolutionary figure of the day a couple of years ago uh, or last year when he did it. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a cool story. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, good for him, man. This, uh, this episode flew by Javes. Oh geez. We've got to go. Yeah. We had to, we had to get out of here. We've We're, gotta get the re- out. And the reason being, by the way, we would, we'd talk until the fucking dicks come home, but um, we're building a new studio. 
So we're building a, a huge mega new studio. It's all because of you guys. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe on YouTube. The, the studio is, look, Rogan has obviously been doing videos for a while. We're making our huge push into videos. Um, and to give you guys more content. content. So yes. for clips and highlights and all the things so that you have something to click on, something to watch, something if you're driving, if you're sitting at home, if you can't sleep or whatever, we're just trying to like. And and we want, we wanted to do specials because you guys have asked for that for a while. Like, dude, it would be awesome to sit and watch the Grammys or the Oscars or something with you yeah, guys like and hear your live, live yeah. opinions of it. So we're going to be doing shit like that. And we're super stoked about it. And it is all because of you. So that's why we have to get out of here today. So we got to finish building the studio. We'll be in by next week. And uh, we are super excited. Subscribe on YouTube uh, and rate us on iTunes, by the way. Um, we're trying to build those ratings as well. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Play a track from uh, uh, Tyler, the Creator. Oh, okay. Play this weird song because um, this whole album is wild and full of weird magical songs and uh he did it uh, it's i don't know i don't I, I don't know what to think but it's great and i keep listening to it good night everyone good night uh-huh.